If you are using AppSheet to automate your business processes in 2023, there are a few best practices that you should know by now. And if you're not already doing them, I highly recommend you start doing these things because it would surely help in your app development workflows. So, in this video, we will talk about setting the default folder paths for your projects, preparing your backend tables properly with what I call the non-negotiable columns, designing your app team and other configurations, and using available app security control. But before we dive in, I would like to welcome you to your ultimate learning resource for everything App Sheets, Google Sheets, App Scripts, and Microsoft Excel automations. I am your App Sheet Pinoy expert, JP, and just like many of you, I am so full of sheets. <laughs> so full of it that I was even featured in the official Google Workspace YouTube channel because of the amazing apps and automations that I have developed for the company I was working with. So if you're dealing with a mountain of spreadsheet data and manual processes, our tutorials, tips, and tricks will help you be more efficient and productive in your daily tasks. So make sure you subscribe. So let's dive in! When you first register for an AppSheet account and then create your first app project, AppSheet automatically creates project folders. And as a default, it is located in your Google Drive's My Drive, and it should automatically create a folder called AppSheet. Now, inside that AppSheet would be another subfolder called Data. And this is where AppSheet automatically creates project folders for each of the app that you create. Now, that's fine. It's okay. Um, it doesn't really have anything in it, except that I find uh, an empty text file. I guess AppSheet needs it for doing some syncing, especially if you're using Google Sheets as a backend for your AppSheet projects. Now, for organizational purposes, I find myself always making sure that the Google Sheets I use as backend tables for my app would always be located in the specific project folder where it belongs. So that is easier to find. Plus, it has some merits as AppSheet uses relative data based on where the Google Sheet is located when it creates subfolders depending on what you're trying to do, such as maybe you're doing some file uploads or creating PDF files. Then it's going to create those subfolders relative to the location of that main Google Sheet table that you're using. Now, that's fine if it doesn't really bother you that much. But if you're an organization freak like me, I would like to have more control as to where my app sheet, app projects are located. And it's very simple to do that. You just go to your main app sheet dashboard and click on that icon on the upper right corner of your app sheet account and then click on account settings. From here, you will be routed to the my account and it has some source integrations app info or whatnot i'm not going to be discussing all of these for this video but we will be focusing on the settings tab on your app sheet account settings and as you can see here the app creator settings default folder path is exactly app sheet slash data which matches what we have in our google drive because it is going to create those subfolders in your My Drive's app sheet slash data subfolders. And then you will have your project subfolders like so. If you want to organize your uh, project uh, folders into your preferred destination, it doesn't matter whether the folder is existing or not, because if it's existing, then app sheet will find it. But if it's not, then app sheet would automatically create that for you. Now, this is case sensitive, so you make sure that you encode it properly. So it could be maybe, let's say, we go projects, right? And then there, projects. So what I want is from my drive, it would go into a projects tab. And then right under the projects tab is where the app projects would be located. So that should help you find your files and your projects easily. And again, make sure that Every time you create a Google Sheet as a backend table for your project and also other assets such as maybe if you'll be using custom images and pictures, we'll cover that later on, then you move it into the project subfolder. It's just that you would have to create and save your app first before the project subfolder would actually even be created by AppSheet. 
Now, if you're like me and you're using shared drives, formerly called team drives, and maybe you're working with a team and for business continuity purposes, you decide that all your related data is located in a team drive where all of your team members can have access to it without you having to manually uh, share it, right? And that's actually quite easy as well. All you have to do is go to your share drive and find that team drive name. And you just simply type team drive without spaces enclosed in square brackets, like so. And then type in your team drive name exactly the way it appears in your share drives. So say, for example, it's named my team drive name and then put it in a subfolder if you wish so if you want it to be just on the root folder of your team drive then you can leave it as it is but if you want to have uh let's say a, a subfolder called app sheet projects like so then you can do it as well and then simply save it and that should be good to go now the question is what if you're only finding out about this now and you have existing apps already deployed and you want to move the default project folder into a new location. That's quite simple. All you have to do is go into your app uh, settings, just here right on the left side, and then go to information and then scroll down and find the default app folder. And this is where you can change that. So as soon as you save it, then AppSheet should automatically move that project folder for you, so check it out. If it does not, then you might have to manually move it. Don't worry, it will not break your app. And then you can start moving your files and other related data to that new subfolder location. Got it? For your app creation or app development preparations, uh, since you're dealing with automating data, then my advice is always to begin with the end in mind. Now, I know that sounds like a quote from John Maxwell, but it applies to AppSheet as well. Because regardless of the functionalities that you may want for your app, the most important part of your development is the end result, which is the data or the reports. So while you're preparing for your app, then think about this. If there will be reports needed from the entries in your app, how will the report look like? So if you would be sending this report in the form of a spreadsheet, then what are the columns that should be present there to make better analysis? What should be the column headers that you will be using when you create pivot table tables, charts, or even uh, linking the sheet to uh, the Google Data Studio dashboard? Planning out your back-end database table is very important. So that means data flow first and then the user interface design later. Now, this may be counterintuitive for other web developers out there. Starting with the end reports will make it much easier to start developing your app. No view or user interface is standalone or independent from an underlying table. So each page in your app will always be directly connected to a table. So for easier development, think about the features of the app you want to build. What are the different tables needed to make the features work? Will there be access permissions? Then there should be a table or sheet for users with their email address, access, permissions, etc. Will there be approval workflows? Then there should be a table or a sheet to identify who will be the approver for which request or for which user. Will there be a request submission? Then start with a table or sheet that has all the columns you will need to process that request. But what I really wanted to focus on in this section is what I call the non-negotiable columns. Especially when it comes to data preparation for creating your app sheet applications. So let's check out our Google Sheets. For this demo, we have each of one of the most commonly used uh, column types. We will cover each of these column types in another video. But for now, based on my experience, there are three columns that are non negotiable, meaning they should always be present in most, if not all, of the tables that you will be adding to your app sheet apps. And these are the unique ID, the date submitted, and the submitted by columns. Let me 
add a column for each one of them. So here we have a unique ID. Uh, let me just simply say ID. And then we'll use the date as the date submitted. And then we'll add a submitted by. These three columns are the non-negotiable columns. There could be more, but based on experience, these are the bare minimum columns that you should be having on each of your tables, especially the main ones that you will be using with your apps. Okay, let me just quickly add this as our first table in our application. So we'll create an app and start with the existing data. Let's call it App Sheet Best Practice Demo. Okay. Let's just assign the other category for now. And then we will use Google Sheets as our backend. And there it is. Let's just customize our sheet. So we will go to data, which shows us each of the columns of our Google Sheet as a field in our application. Now, as you can see here, AppSheet automatically detected the word ID as uh, the primary key and it also selected this as the label for now. So we will discuss the uh, key and label maybe in another video. So let's talk about the unique ID. Unfortunately, AppSheet does not have an auto increment column that we can use as a primary key for our table. Fortunately, there is an AppSheet built in expression called unique ID and AppSheet automatically supplied that for us. Uh, since it detected it as the key for our table. Now, every time a new record is attempted to be created, a unique ID is assigned even before the record is saved. But there are some power tips that you can use for the unique ID. First of all, as you can see here, the user can actually edit the auto-generated ID on the entry form. Unless this is what you really have in mind, then I suggest we remove that capability of editing the unit ID. However, if we simply untick the editable text box for this column, that would also prevent AppSheet to assign a unique ID. As you can see, the key column ID of the table is read-only, and since the table allows ads, the key must be editable. So AppSheet automatically reverted that as editable. So we can really use it like that, right? So what we will do is we will go to the column settings of uh, this column and go to the update behavior section. And then in the editable field, we would use this flask icon, which allows us to put an expression. So we just simply need to put an expression that would result to false. And the simplest way to do that is just by typing in false. So let's save this. So as you can see, AppSheet is still able to assign that ID, but the user can no longer be able to edit that. You can also see that instead of just a uh, tick box, AppSheet automatically shows the expression that we have assigned for that ID. By the way, if you find yourself always having to use expressions for the show, editable and require tick boxes in your editor settings, then you can save time by activating the flask icon on your app editor home instead of having to go to the column settings every time you want to do that. So to do that, you just simply go to your account and then select editor settings and then turn on the expand all sections option. And as you can see, the flask icon is readily available in each of the show editable and required tick boxes, although it may just consume more space as well. So uh, you just have to see what fits your workflow the best. Now going back to our unique ID, you can also customize the way that it appears because right now you can see that it's an eight character random global unique identifier, right? So for example, I find it cleaner if all the letters are capitalized. So what I do is I just simply wrap this unique ID inside the upper function, like so. So that means every time AppSheet generates the unique identifier, then it would be capitalized or transformed into an uppercase. And as you can see, it's a little bit cleaner.
Now, I also normally use a prefix as well for all the unique IDs in all the apps that I create. So that just by looking at the uh, ID or the unique ID, I would know which app or request it actually is related to. And uh, lastly, what I do is I put in a prefix like demo dash. Then I uh, concatenate it using the ampersand with our uppercase unique ID. And as you can see, the prefix is always added for all new records that I'll be adding to my app. And lastly, I can incorporate uh, date information in the unique ID. This way, I can easily determine when the entry was initially made. So instead of just a prefix, I can actually use the today expression and format it in a way that shows year, dash, month, and day. Okay. And then I'll connect it with the auto-generated unit ID. So let's see that in action. And there you go. As you can see, instead of just a prefix, our unique ID will make a little more sense than just the random auto-generated uh, global identifier. Our second non-negotiable column is the date of submission, which is our date submitted field in our table here. And this records the date when the record was initially created. AppSheet was smart enough to detect our column as a date and has automatically assigned the built-in today expression as the initial value. If for some reason AppSheet was not able to do that, then you may have to assign it manually. You can also be more granular and capture also the time, in which case, instead of just a date uh, column, you will change it into a date time column. And of course, you have to replace today with the expression now. However, take note that AppSheet will only do this once for every record. So once the record is saved, then even when the user edits that entry, it would still show the original date and time when the record was first created. If you want to capture the last date and time edited instead, then you have to go into the column settings, scroll down to update behavior, click on reset on edit. So in this way, every time a user edits that record, app sheet will reset that column which will trigger again the initial value of now that we assigned for that column all right now it depends on your use case but there are times that i actually preserve the original date and time but i add another column called last modified like so and i will use that to track the last date and time that the record was edited by any user so consider those options for the project that you are doing now, while we're here, we're at the submitted by our third non-negotiable column. And this would allow us to know the user who actually created the entry. Good thing that the app sheet has a built-in expression called user email. There we go. And this expression automatically captures the email address of the user who is logged in at any point in time. And needless to say, we will change the column type into email instead of text, like so. And as you can see, when we create a new record, AppSheet automatically assigns the current user, which you can see right down here in the preview app as section, right? As the user who is creating this entry. Now, I will simulate another user by using the preview app as option here. Let's say user1, like so. User1. User1 test, right? like so. Save it. And you should see that it's already user1. Now, this will have a lot of good use in the future. For example, you can use this field to allow the user to filter the app 
by using the search uh, box on the top here and only show those that are submitted by a particular user. There you go. And you can also permanently limit the users to their own interests only. There are actually two ways to do that. So stick around until the app security chapter of this video if you want to see how we do it. Now, if in case you design it in a way that allows the user to create a record and another user can edit the same, then it would be a good idea to have separate columns logging in the original user who made the entry and then the last user who made modifications to the record. Then you can see that the original user who created the record is preserved and the admin is captured as the last user who edited that record. Now, it may be a good idea that every time a user visits your app, they will be directed to an about page with basic information about the purpose and objective of your app, as well as important reminders, update notifications, and instructions on navigating through the app. To do this, you will go to settings, this side right here, and then under the views uh, subsection, click on general. And then turn on start with an about. This means that instead of going directly to the starting view, which is selected up here, they will be directed to an about page. And if they click OK on it, then they will be directed to the starting view, which is selected in here. They can also go back to the about page anytime by clicking on the hamburger icon up here and then clicking about. And as you can see, we don't have much in our about page right now, but we can control it by going to the app settings, then information page, and then customizing the short name, which is what you see here. The short description, which is going to appear right after the short name, and then the description. Let us just add a few lines here, see how it would look like. Now, unfortunately, there is currently no way of uh, formatting text or using HTML tags or markups in the description. A good thing it follows your uh, line carriages and returns. Like so. Now let's talk about custom branding. Since we're already here, let's talk about customizing our app so we can change this app logo that you have right here on top of the about page, as well as the app headers if we choose to show it here. Okay? So from the settings on the left side, we go to theme and brand, and then we can customize our theme, our primary colors, uh, our app logo, and more. AppSheet actually provides a few icon recommendations, but uh, we can actually upload our own logo to Google Drive and then upload it to um, AppSheet as our logo. So let's try that. Choose Google Drive files, and then we can search. Our app sheet icon. Uh, and then we save that. Then that should be the icon that appears in our hamburger menu, right? And that should also be on the top of our about page. Perfect. So since we're already here, we can see that app sheet already created that project folder as we've discussed earlier. So as a good practice, we always want to make sure that all related files to this project is stored in the project folder that AppSheet created. Like so, going back, if we scroll down in the theme and brand section or page, you can see that there's a header and footer section. You can mix and match this according to your liking. But personally, I always set it up this way. But it's just a personal preference, okay? Let's save it. Now, if you notice, every time I click the menu, which is this hamburger icon on the top left, there are other options that you see here aside from the About page. Now, it can be useful for many use cases, but for most apps that I create, I actually don't want this to be here. So first is the Smart Assistant. You can turn it off by going to the Intelligence section here, and then under Options, click Smart Assistant, and then turn that off. Next is the share and the feedback 
uh, buttons, which I can go back to settings here. And under views in general, scroll down to the system buttons icon. And I will disable share and turn off allowing users to provide feedback. Uh, if you save that, then our menu option would be much cleaner like so. Now, our next section is customizing uh, column names and view names. Now, as you may have noticed, the field names in your app are mostly generated from the column headers that you set up with your underlying machine. Since you always want your app to be intuitive uh, for your users, you may want to provide them with easy to understand and straightforward uh, field names or column names, right? However, Having really long field names in your Google Sheet resulting to really long names in your app can cause difficulty in development and maintaining it, especially if you would be using the column names in a lot of expressions as you keep building on the automations of your app. So as a best practice, you try to maintain very short column names in your Google Sheet and then use the display name option, which you can find here, this section you have here, to show your users column names or questions different from your actual column names in your Google Sheet. For really long names, such as questions, you can actually use the description column. So let's just uh, try one. So for our inner, we use the display name called drop down. Let's save it. There you are, and you can see that the questions or the field names that the users would see is actually uh, different from the actual column names that are saved in your Google Sheet, making it easier for you as a developer to maintain your uh, backend tables. So aside from that, you also want to customize your view names. So maybe we we'll call this requests. Eh? Requests. There you go. There you go. So it also has a cleaner look by you customizing the, the view name. Now, unless your app is intended to be visible to the public, then it must have app security controls in place. There are different levels of security that we can use in AppSheet. There is app level security, there is user level security, view or page level security, table level security, and role or record level security. App and user level security can be set by going to the security and then under the require sign-in option, want to make sure that require sign-in is selected and then choose an authentication provider that you use. In my case, most of the companies I work with are using Google Workspace, so we just simply choose Google, but there are other options from the list. You just have to select the one that fits your specific project. Now, if it's a mixture of uh, different authentication providers, then you would like to turn on uh, allow all sign-in users. Okay? So that means users would still be required to sign in, but it is not restricted to a specific authentication provider. And you can still capture their email, or you can use personalization features like the security filters, which we would cover in this section. So I'll turn this off for now, and then let's talk about the app-level security. App-level security is where you actually um, add the specific users that you would allow to be able to access or use your application. So for example, if I add here user1, appsheetdemo.com, you can actually control whether this user is just somebody who could use the application, you know, submit entries, can they view the definition, meaning see the underlying uh, setup that you've made, but not be able to edit that, or edit definition, meaning this is a co-author that can actually make changes to your app. So you add them one by one. Now, it would always be recommended to add users individually for better security. However, I understand that it can be cumbersome and adding groups is only available for the enterprise plans. I happen to just have a core plan right now. An alternative option is to simply add your uh, domain name, like this app sheet demo, as the user email address. However, this also means that 
anyone, as long as they have a user account under your uh, domain, can actually access your app, add entries, edit entries, or delete entries. So it's either you add all allowed users one by one or individually, add groups if you have an enterprise plan, or the domain. But make a table of all user email addresses that are allowed to use the app. So what do I mean by that? I will add another table with all the users. So we will add a list of all the users that is allowed to use the app. And then add that as another table. And we just love that users tab that we have. There you go. Uh, now that we have the table in our app, then we will simply implement new level security controls by using uh, a show if condition in the display section of our view. And we may have to do this in all views or pages in your application. For example, uh, since our table is named users and the email addresses are in a column called email, then the show expression would be using the in formula. And in is actually needle in the haystack. So if the needle is in the haystack, and the needle is actually the current user login, so we will use the user email expression, right? And the haystack is actually our uh, users table and the email column, like so. So what happens is that only if the current user is found in the user's table email column would this view, which is the request view, be visible to the user. So let's see it in action. So as you can see, the view has actually uh, disappeared, right? Even if I added the entire domain, then any users can log into the app. But since they are in, not in the table of allowed users, then they would not be able to see the view. And, you know, the app is rendered useless for them. But if I am one of those, Let's say I am user1 at appsheetdemo.com. Then the view returns and I would be able to uh, see it again. For even more security, it is even recommended to also add this as a security filter in all of your tables, which we will cover in just a few moments. Okay? But before that, let's discuss about uh, table level security. And this can be accessed via the table settings of each table, which is this icon that you see right here. So let's go back to our main table. And from here, you can control whether the table allows updates, adds, deletes, or if the table is read-only. But if you can see here, there is actually a flask icon, which means that you can uh, use an expression to have conditions on to when the table would allow add, edit, delete or when the table would be read only. So the allowed values are actually shown on the top here to guide you. So say for example if it's user one then it's gonna be updates only, right? If it's user two then it's all changes and you can use any sort of expression as long as it, the expression would uh, return what kind of update uh, would be available to that table. So that allows you to control table level security as well. And then finally, there is what we call the row level or the record level security, which allows us to control the permission that each user can have on which records on your table. This is where our uh, submitted by column that we discussed earlier as one of our non-negotiable columns would be really helpful. We said earlier that there are two ways to limit the users to their own entries only using this field or column. First is we can create a slice of this table. And in the fly filter condition, we will say that we want to only show the records that matches the current user. So that means we want to say that the submitted by matches the current user that is logged in. So we'll say submitted by, submitted by equals user email. Like so, there you are. Now, in our app backend, let me just try to create different entries for this, right? Three, so on, so on. Okay. There you are. We'll save it. So that means this slice 
would get all the records from the main table, but filter it in a way that the submitted by column only matches the current user that is logged in. Then we would change the view source of our main view to point to the slice instead of the main table. Of course, you can always rename your slice into something that's easier to understand for you as a developer. So now, as you can see, there are no requests appearing in my view. But if I change it to user underscore one, now I am only able to see the records that has user one as the submitted by column. And as you can see, there are only two records. So if we look into our table, there should be only one entry from user three. So if I switch to user three, then user three would only see one record which has the user three's email address as the one for submitted by request. However, keep in mind that AppSheet will still have to fetch the entire table into your app before the slice would uh, be able to filter that, which may affect your sync time depending on the size of your table. But if you have a core plan or higher, you can actually save on sync time by using the security filter of the table. So instead of uh, using a slice, we will just put the same expression of our slice into a security filter. So let's copy uh, that uh, slice expression we made, right? And the security filter can access two ways. You can go to the table, click on table settings, and you can scroll down and put it here in the security filter. Like so. Or you can actually go back to security and then click on security filters on the left side, which allows you to manage all the security filters for all tables in your application. And as you can see, the security filter we already added earlier through the table settings view is also transferred into here. And in this way, the app will only fetch those records that matches the security filter for this particular user saving on same time. Keep in mind though that this is only available on the core plan or higher. So if you are on a lower uh, type of app sheet plan, then using Slice is your only option. And those are the best practices that I wanted to share with you today. There are tons of other recommendations on what to do, but these are what I normally always do with most of our app development projects. How about you? Do you have other best practices you want to share? Let us know in the comments section because it may definitely help out our community here in Polish. Our next videos will be about the different ways of creating drop-down boxes in your apps as well as creating dynamic drop-downs or the dependent drop-downs. And these two are the most common how-to questions that I receive as a subject matter expert for AppSheet in the company I was working with. If you have requests on what you want us to cover here, then let us know in the comments and I'll make sure that I will consider making a video out of your requests. And needless to say, please click on that subscribe button and you know you can smash that notification bell so that you would know when our next videos would be available for you. And once again, this is your AppSheet Pinoy Expert JP saying you and me and all of us, we are all full of See ya.